So what do I have in here? This is, this is a recipe I made up. So I've got one cup of flour in here. And I've written down a scrap piece of paper. Uh, one tablespoon of potato starch and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And I didn't put any salt in. This is my own recipe. And I came up with it and it's really good. Let's put a dash. Okay. Oh, I've got to get some more stuff. All right, so that's what's in here. If this works out, maybe I'll, I'll do it more often, but we'll see. I'm actually doing this a little differently, and maybe next time I'll do it for members only. But it's hard. I'm doing it where it's live, but I'm not talking to anybody because there's no way I can see anything. Not this hour. I'm tired, but it's Gary's birthday. Is it past midnight? <laughs> if it's past midnight, it's his birthday already. And I want him to get up in the morning and find his favorite cookies. So we've got that. So this is one cup of flour and I'm using gluten-free flour. So it's rice. It's a rice flour. And then one tablespoon of potato starch, half a teaspoon of baking soda. You saw I put a dash of salt in. So I've got that. Let's see, now I need a half a cup of butter and oil. Let me finish with the sugar because I put in one and a half cups of sugar and then one egg. So let me get that. I'm gonna use brown sugar and white sugar. So one and a half cups. Let's see, there's, there's no exact measurement, but I like the brown sugar, so I think that's enough. I use clothespins. Put that in there. Here's my cup. Yeah. So that's just about a cup. My sugar's on the other side. Let me grab a little more sugar. So excuse me for a minute. So I have to bring the sugar in in 10 pound bags, sometimes more because of the hummingbirds. Okay, so this is. Eh, I don't want to make it too sweet. He doesn't like real sweet. Okay, so I've got one and a half cups of sugar. I've got my sugar. And then I've got my flour. I'm trying to clean up my kitchen. I got stuff everywhere. I've got squash. I got projects I'm working on. I've got paint because I'm working on stuff. That's fabric paint. I'm working on it, but it's just stuff I need, so I want to keep it out so I can see it. So I've got my my sugar together, I got my flour. I'm gonna need some vanilla flavoring. What else do I need? Um, the oil. Now this is a half a cup, but I don't use an entire half a cup. Again, I don't measure a whole lot. So we're going to use about half of that because I mix it with oil and butter and it comes out really, really good. Let's see. and it softens right now. I had it sitting out for a while. I was gonna skip the cookies tonight and do it in the morning. I thought, no, my butter's so nice and soft. So I put about half of that in. And this is butter. I don't use margarine at all. I stopped years ago on margarine. I, it's not real. I would not use that anymore. I, would, I want something that's not, I guess you would say not man-made. I want it, I want butter. All right, so then I still need a little bit of oil. I think my other cup wasn't there. Let me find my oil that's in the cupboard. I'm gonna get my oil. Let me see if I've got a quarter of a cup measuring cup because I'm using my measuring cups. Okay, there's my quarter of a cup. Make sure, oh, let me check the camera for a moment. Make sure it's on and going. Yes, it's on. Okay, where's my oil? There's my oil. So, so I've got about a quarter of a cup of butter. And then we're gonna put in oh, a quarter of a cup of oil. It doesn't matter if you go over. And then what I'm going to do, this is why everything piles. 
add in there. And then I'm going to crack my egg. A green egg. And I want to dirty up more bowls than I have to right now. I'm putting it in my little measuring cup. Looking good. Okay, so I got my egg in there. And let's see. I've got my vanilla. I think this is a new bottle. Oh no, it is a new bottle. Okay. That's a, a jar opener and I hung it on the wall and then I can just use it that way. Okay, brand new bottle. I use a cap full. It's probably about a half a teaspoon. And that's vanilla. Now there's something I cannot live without. This is new. It's my pastry cutter or pastry mixer. Oh my gosh, I cannot live without this anymore. Ever since I started using it, I can't use anything else. It's my favorite. It mixes up everything. Let me just double check I've got everything so I didn't forget anything. Look, I make my own hot cocoa. I love it. I'll have to give you the recipe one day, see if you want to try it. Okay, I know I'm talking quiet. Gary's sleeping. All right, so I think I've got everything now. I should write that down somewhere else because if I lose it, I won't remember exactly how to make it. Of course, if I tape it like now, I will, won't I? So if it's on video, I'll remember. This has been the greatest thing. Oh, we have one more thing we have to add in. One more thing. We'll get there in a minute. The cookie is so good. There's so many variations I can make of this. So this is just the basic one. Okay, so now we've got it all whipped up. I'm telling you, if you haven't tried this to make cookies, try one. I bought another one that's a little different and I haven't used it yet. This one is wire and the other one is more like, kind of like blades, but they're not real sharp. Okay, so we've got that all mixed up really good. Now we've got the flour. We need one more thing. Let's see, I'll use this measuring cup. I need a cup, about a cup of almonds. Doesn't have to be a full cup, whatever I want. This is so good. I'm kidding, I'm not kidding you, it's so good. get loud. Okay. And now, I'm get that all mixed up. You can't see anything. I know that because of all my junk here. If I can get my kitchen completely cleaned out here, then I can do more cooking here and show you. All right, so we're gonna get the flour, the baking soda, and everything in there and start to mix it. So this has got your flour, the cornstarch, what did I tell you, a tablespoon of cornstarch. That really seems to make a big difference with the cookies. I don't know why, but it really does. I've noticed when I've read some recipes of a lot of different cookies, especially from different parts of the world. Israel's real big on using corn starch, I've noticed, because I've bought some Israeli cookies before, and they always have corn starch in it. And I thought, not corn flour, but corn starch. And so I started adding it into my cookies, probably different other European countries also as well, and it made a difference. So a tablespoon, that's all I put in. Okay, now we're going to put in... more the chopped nuts and they're chopped fine. It's almost, almost like a flour. Not quite, but almost. You can make it chunkier and I've done it chunkier, but when I made it uh, last time chunkier, Gary said he liked it 
when it's more fine, and so do I. And these cookies spread, and that's what I love, flat and crispy. But this thing has just changed my life. I had it sitting for years. This is actually really old. It was made in the USA, not China. And it's been sitting forever. And about maybe three months ago, I picked it up. I had it like in a pile of, you know, like I've got all my kitchen stuff. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, I'm going to try it. You don't see people really using it except if they're cutting butter into something. And when I used it for my cookies, I could not believe the difference. It really seemed to change the cookies completely. Like I said, they're so fast to make. Okay. So I've got that. I'm making a ton of mess with all my silverware. Which is fine. I can wash it later. Before I go to sleep. I'm a night owl. I don't sleep well at night. And it has nothing to do with getting older because it runs on my family. When my brother was little, he used to stay up with us and watch Peyton plays. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. And he was like eight months old. <laughs> my sister's a night owl. My mother's a night owl. My father is not. My mother still stays up late. They're all night owls. Um, I think I'll go with that. You don't need to grease the pan because it's so oily. I have not greased the pan, but they all, everybody in my family has always stayed up really late. It's crazy. And so this is just something I do. Now Gary has always gone to sleep really early. This will really spread. Actually, it's a little softer, a little bit softer than normal. So it might spread too much, even though I don't think it can spread too much for me. I really like a flat, crispy cookie. But I can always add a little more flour or a little more nut powder. I use almonds and sometimes I put in walnuts with the almonds, but I always have almonds. And sometimes I put in um, pecans and blend them up at the same time. This is going to spread too much. I'm going to stay on these cookies. It's usually about seven minutes. But I'll tell you what I do, I don't put the timer on. And I try not to leave the kitchen. If I leave the kitchen, I'm gonna burn them. And it's just the way it is. Because I'll forget, I'll sit down. I don't think I forgot anything. The dough is incredible. Mm. I started higher at 400 and then I turned it down. Mm. Now I just have to watch it. And it makes a bunch of trays. Let me get another tray and get it ready. Now I'm thinking if I did this like at night when I do baking or something, it will probably bore everybody. They'll be going, what is she doing? Or maybe maybe the good thing is some of you that can't sleep will listen to me and fall asleep because I'll put you to sleep. But I'm trying not to talk so loud so I won't wake him up. He can sleep to anything though. Yet I'll, I'll run the nuts and the nuts are crunching. Everybody else is sleeping. Zoe's sleeping. You know, when I used to bake at night, my my first dog, dog would sit and wait. And she knew it's cookies. And then Kitty used to sit and wait. She would wait and just like, come on, hurry up. And she'd wait till they come out of the oven. Zoe hasn't caught on yet. Not quite. I'm trying to keep these small because when I put a little too much oil or butter in it, then they spread like a really flat cookie. And then if I have a little more flour, they'll stay, they'll still spread, but they won't get really, really flat. 
So this is what I do at midnight. Not always. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably not eat any cookies, maybe one. Then I'm going to go turn on a Hallmark movie. But now I've never been a really good sleeper and I still get up between six and seven in the morning. So I don't get that much sleep. I know some of you have said how important sleep it is, but I can't sleep. And I don't want to, I don't want to be frustrated. You know, like, I think that's the worst thing in the world when you can't sleep and then you're frustrated about it and then that creates more stress. when they can't sleep they end up with taking drugs different sleep medication no I don't I don't do that I think it's better if you can't sleep to do something and then stay less stressed and if you're less stressed you'll get tired that's the way I am and then eventually I'm tired and I'll go to sleep now sometimes I'll go to sleep at, uh, I'll fall asleep watching TV at 10, I, I wake up at midnight, I'll go do something, anything, and then I'll end up going back to sleep afterwards. So, I don't know, it's just, like I said, it runs in my family. My, oh, my, my brother, my sister, and me. My daughter used to stay up really late, I don't think she does anymore. My granddaughter does not. My grandson does. He can stay up all night. That's it's amazing. Mm. So, but I but as long as I make cookies or maybe answer questions on YouTube or think about a video I want to do or what I'm going to do tomorrow or write myself notes, that's okay because I'm not stressing that I can't sleep, and that's what I don't want. Oh, they're puffing, actually. Which is good. Okay, they're, they're puffing, so they're not going to spread that much. What keeps them from spreading a lot is the baking soda, and I might have added in a teeny bit more, a half a teaspoon. I probably reached in there real quick and threw it in with the flour. That will puff it also. I need to write that down in a really good spot because I experiment a lot, even like the hot cocoa. I like having, a, especially this time of the year or all through the winter, a glass or a cup of hot cocoa. But what bothers me is when you go to the store and you read the label, pick up the box and read the label what's in it. It's like the whole side of the box. And it's like, what is all this stuff? So I stopped buying that, plus they put in um, different types of corn syrup, not just corn syrup, but hydrogenated corn syrup. That's the worst thing for your body because it's been changed and your body doesn't know what to do with it. Look it up. Don't ask me. So anyway, so what I started doing a while ago, and I did it now because I haven't done it since because it was summer, is I make my own recipe and there's nothing in here. So all I've got is a recipe and it does take a recipe. You have to work at it so you get it right. All that's in here is a, pow a good powdered milk. And then I should, I should just do it. They just tell you how it cocoa, a little bit of sugar, a uh, little bit of other things in it. But there's literally like five ingredients in here. And then you just mix in, you take, I uh, have a recipe of how much to take from it. I take three teaspoons out of here, a hot cup of water. I, I pour the water in and top it with a little bit of milk. And then I put a little bit of Cool Whip or something on top. But when you read the package, of hot cocoa I'm not kidding you it is really scary a lot of stuff is scary it's like the gluten-free cake mixes some of them especially the first ones that came out was flour 
and it would be a rice flour, there could be corn flour, some other flour in there, and then it would have xanthac gum, and that's what makes it act more like regular wheat flour, sugar, salt, flavoring. There was nothing in it. There was like five ingredients. If you look at a box of regular cake mix, again, the whole side, because it's got all these preservatives. They didn't know how, how to add that in, I guess, through the gluten-free. But the whole side will have like 50 different ingredients in there. I'm not kidding you on some of them. Now I'm seeing some of the gluten-free starting to add in more ingredients. But I did find out we have an Aldi's. They have a really good cake mixes. And again, they've got that like the five ingredients. And that's what is so cool. So it's very basic. It's just like you would bake it yourself and pull out the flour or pull out what you want. That's what's really good. And that's what I try to look for. Look, we can't make cookies. Oh, they didn't flatten. I, they, you can't make, oh, because I use more butter than oil. Sometimes if you use more oil, it flattens. Use more butter, it'll puff. It'll be good no matter what. You can't make cookies healthy. I know a lot of people want to put in oatmeal and all kinds of healthy stuff. Cookies aren't healthy. But we can make cookies where we're not using ingredients that is really, I, I don't want to use the, the word I want to say, but really bad for us. So if we use more basic ingredients, at least we're using ingredients that our body knows what to do with and it's not that bad. So keep things real is what it is. Real food and you should be okay. I happen not to be a fan of, oh, well, let's say I was gonna say I don't like, I don't like oatmeal added into my cookies if it's not an oatmeal cookie. Does that make sense? Some people do that, but if it's an oatmeal cookie, I like oatmeal cookies, but I want to make it the way I want to make it, like sugar, not a lot of, I think you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. So close. She, you know, if I put in a little bit of oil, they'll flatten, but I'm going to wait. Because the other day I made them with more oil and less butter, and they, well, I've been making them, and they flattened really good. This time, I didn't put walnuts in this time, and they're a little bit puffier. And then I'll show you the other thing I'm going to do. Hold on. Well, you know what? I'll get it when I put that in. So I'm almost ready to pull it. If you wait too long on these cookies, you'll lose it. That's why I don't like putting the timer on. I just want them lightly browned and keep in mind the longer you keep cookies on a cookie sheet they're still baking so you want to get them off as fast as possible because they'll they could even almost burn just by sitting on a baking sheet i'm going to say they're done i like them light okay now we'll get this one in Let me get my rack. Hold on. Now, some people don't use cookie racks. They just take them off and they put them on a cookie sheet. I have found that they are crispier when you put them on a cooling rack, including cupcakes and other stuff. Yeah, these didn't spread as much. But the dough was incredible, so I know the cookie's going to be good. That is really cool. These are so good. And I use such a small amount of flour when you think about it. It's only a cup of flour, rice flour, because really I've kind of... Okay, I want it to be a little cool before I put more cookies on it. I kind of used, you know, cut back on the flour and I'm using more almond flour. It's going to be too hot to eat. So good. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and put it on. And the reason I'm going to start to put it on now, even though it's really too... It's still too hot because I want to get this done. I don't want to be up all night. So it's Gary's birthday. Let me see. Let me check the clock. Yes, technically. Technically, he's already, he had his birthday because in Australia, his birthday would have been 
about 18 hours ago, which he did mention to me. So it is his birthday already. This will be good. He'll get up in the morning. He'll have his coffee. He's been working in, in that new room, so he'll grab some cookies and run outside and go start painting. And he's putting together his table. He's so excited. He says, you know how so many of you want him to do videos, that he had a work table. He wants to do all these projects. And that a lot of times he gets up in the morning and he doesn't have any place to do anything. So he said if he had this work table, he would start working on different projects and be able to do a video with it. So that's that's really good. So I, I'm encouraging him. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. And I'm, I'm glad he wanted to do this. He loves tinkering. He loves building things. And so it's I'm really happy for him on that. And we sat down last night and looked at all the stuff that he set up and I'm gonna make some teeny cookies. So sure, that might be too teeny. And he's making these cabinets right now. It's gonna be like made to order. That will be really nice. It's out of those cabinets he had left. So he's gonna he painted them and then he's making a tabletop. I told him he's got to go to the wall. He said, no, it doesn't. I said, yes, because if it doesn't butt up against the wall, you have a space there, you've got some place to lose things. I told him it could be anything. Something could fall, fall behind the counter, a bird could fly in, a lizard, then you can't get behind it. It's got to be butted up against the wall. So he's working on that. Oh my gosh, I love these cookies. Oh, good they are. They're kind of soft, but they're crispy. And they're really nutty. And I can eat a whole bunch of them and they don't bother me. It's like I don't get a, a sugar high. I don't feel blah, like if you eat too much flour. Because half of the flour is nuts. Mm. So when it comes to the cooling rack, already, I'll get the next batch out, put that one in, and I'll be done. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. You guys are supposed to be sleeping. You don't know when a cookie is. Hmm. Come here. You too? You're supposed to be sleeping too, Jack. Come here, Jack, hurry up. They're not good for you. Come here, come here, come on. Come here, right there, right there. Did he get it? Yeah. Oh, he walked into the camera. Remember, Jack is pretty much blind, but he can smell cookies. Okay, so this is... Let me see where I can put this. This is not quite that hot, so I can move it now. If I can lift it, it's not that hot. I, can put it over. I promise you, I'll clean up my kitchen so we can do more. And you can see me come in and do stuff. I'm sure I've confused a lot of you a lot. No, there's no more cookies. You've made a mess out of my floor. No, no, no. No, out. You're going to have to go. And now... We'll get those cookies out, those in, and we're done. And in the morning, Gary won't be able to make coffee and have cookies. No, Jack, no. No, I don't have any more. No. Nope. In fact, I'm not eating anymore. No, you're not eating any cookies. That's it. Teeny piece. Sugar is not good for dogs. Okay, Zoe, that's, that's it. All right, so I'll need, let's see. Oh, I gotta make hummingbird food too. I think I can make that in the morning. I'm really quick at making that. All right, let me get 
a cake pan out. I think I will make the hummingbird food in the morning. Start piling them in here. Now, if I was doing crafting work, I would be able to look up and get my tablet and be able to answer questions or chit chat. But this, no, this I need to get done. And this is why it makes it difficult for me. Like, how could I tell you how to cook things? Even pickles, when I make pickles, it's all like, it's more of tasting it. I pour the water in, I can taste it. I pour it out. I never double dip. So I would taste with a spoon. I know exactly the right taste and then bam, I put it together and we have pickles. Cookies, this is how I make a lot of my cookies. And this time I'm starting to write recipes down for myself, like the hot cocoa I made. I wanna make sure it's right. So when I go back to make it again, it's not like, oh, did I add in this and how much or I'm off. So I've got the hot cocoa exactly the way I want. That is perfect. And this too, I've got this the way I want. So this is this is really really good okay where is my oven then over there like i said i wait until the cookies are just golden brown mm. another 30 seconds or so if you if they get too golden brown they're not burnt but they get really hard and if they're, un, you know, let me put it this way. When it comes to cookies, I'd rather go undercooked when it comes to these cookies than overcooked. When it comes to brownies, go undercooked if you're not sure because brownies will get as hard as a rock instead of overcooked. And there's certain things you want to go overcooked instead of undercooked. I hope I didn't confuse you. That's the way I feel. Okay, so we got these. Yeah, and this is why I don't leave and don't set the timer because I don't depend on the timer with these. I just come in here and stay here and this way I know I'll get it right because I'm watching it. If I don't watch it, you know how fast cookies will bake. Now these cookies sitting on the rack, on the uh, pan, they're still baking. That pan is hot. Remember, we can't touch it. If we can't touch it, then whatever you've got is cooking. It's kind of like when you make a chicken or a turkey, you're roasting it and you take it out and you let it sit. You're not actually just letting it sit. It's still cooking. So I wait, oh, about a minute. And once it's been about a minute, I start removing them. If you wait too long, they may stick to the pan. And if you grab them too early, well, they can break right away. Kind of, you know, they're, they're not quite set. But you can test it. Like now I can see how easy it is to pick up. And like I said, a cooling rack is the best thing for cookies. I really want one more, but I don't want to get a sugar high in the middle of the night. I want to go finish this and then have, oh, see I broke that. I broke it with it a little bit. So we got to get rid of that piece. They're watching me. They're watching me. So that's it. If you really want to see more things like this, which I think is silly, let me know. I can turn it on sometimes when I'm just cooking because I really don't know what I'm doing. I'll literally throw something in there. It's like the chili I made. Just go into the fridge. Oh, we got this left over. I got this. Flavors. It's what you like. Like if you don't like vanilla flavoring, use almond flavoring. If you don't like almonds, you can do the same thing with walnuts because I've done it. You can do almost any nut you want. It's whatever you like is what's gonna make something taste really good. So now I gotta get that. I see, instead of topping you, I should get all this washed. So when I'm done, I can pack that up and get some sleep. Mm. What I have to do is finish cleaning my kitchen. I started. I sit things down and then I come back later to do it. It's like I got to cook the squash or cut it up. I've got a pomegranate I brought in. I've got tomatillos still sitting there. More I picked up. I've got some wildflower seeds here. It's like, well, I've got to file them or put them somewhere or plant them. And I end up with stuff. I got a moth trying to come in. Oh. 
get it my oil put away where it belongs. So now you get dead air space and me washing dishes. And I can't, because I'm running it live, which it's not live, it's live for me, I can't edit it, so I can't take this out. I am so sorry. This is kind of an experiment to see what it looks like. I actually have a video in my computer. I hope you can hear me. And I did chocolate chip cookies one night, in the middle of the night. And then I did, no, 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 Zoe, I'm not getting anything else. I did do that with my camera, not my phone, and I wasn't live. So I could edit it, and I looked at it, and I thought, who's going to want to see this, even edited, me doing chocolate chip cookies in the middle of the night? So I thought, well, I'll take a look at this, see what I think, maybe go on for members, if I have any members that can't sleep at night, or they're on the other side of the world, and it's a different time, because it might be morning for you. I'll, I'll kind of play it by ear and see how that is. All right, let me check those cookies because I'm waiting too long. Okay. No, Zoe, out. There's no more cookies. I am not giving you any more cookies. waiting she knows oh she, all she said was no that doesn't mean that's more of a maybe no it's no tonight if you use more oil than butter it's it will spread if you use more butter sometimes it puffs you I've seen people say which you kind of find odd is if the dough is too stiff, add in water. Water to me, when it cooks in with flour, it's kind of odd. It, uh, they say, I've seen it. Now you go, well, it's just too stiff, add in water. They don't add in water, but they tell you to add in water. Water will make the cookie hard as a rock a lot of times because what's happening is think of how when you were a kid, some of us made our own Play-Doh and we mix flour and water together and that dries, and then you have hard clay. Well, that's what water does to flour. So I would never add water. If you're gonna add anything, a little bit of butter, maybe an, an extra half an egg, scramble up an egg, add a little bit of egg. But I, I'm kind of leery on adding in water. I have done it before, and I know, well, it's not just I know how the chemistry of it works, but when you think about what flour and water does, it makes it too hard. So I would never add in water. But if you're doing it and it works for you, that's perfect. Um, I'll flip this. I usually only flip it once. This is a gas oven. The oven is probably not perfect. I would never give up my oven. The oven is 35 years old, and when it breaks down, Gary fixes it. We order the parts. I am not giving you any cookies. We order the parts. It's a double oven. And you know, I can't believe how hard it is to get a double oven with a broiler. That's gas. I went everywhere looking for one. Electric, not a problem. But a gas oven, I could not find one. You can get an oven and a broiler, but you can't get two ovens with a broiler. My broiler's on the top. So I finally decided I'm not gonna change it. I bought that oven. I bought that oven in 1989. There was an old oven in there. The door was broke. I had one of these well-known house insurance uh, companies that refused to pay. They were supposed to because the door was broke and they said you must have been standing on the door. Nobody was standing on the door. The door hinges were out. So they wouldn't pay. So some of these companies that tell you, oh, 
pay us $400 a month and we cover all your appliances. I have had not real good luck with some of those. So I ended up buying that one and then when I wanted to get a new one because it's it had a lot of problems. The broiler wouldn't ignite. One of the ovens didn't work for a while. I started looking around. They said, we don't make them anymore. I said, you don't make double ovens? Well, yeah, but uh, electric. And I know electric's good, but I have gas and it's so cheap to use gas. So that's when I said to Gary, I can't get another one. So he said, well, what do we need? And he looked into it. And all we needed were the inside parts and he changed it. So anytime they go out now, he just fixes it. So now I've got, I keep my old double oven, my gas range. 30 more seconds. And then we are done and you could go to sleep, but you're not watching this in the middle of the night. And I can finish washing up some of my dishes and maybe I'll get my kitchen more presentable. This is a tiny kitchen. Whoever built this house, did not cook. I'm telling you, they must have eaten out because this is literally, it's, I call it a camper kitchen. It's just a tiny kitchen. There's no room, there's no counter space. That's my counter space, which is the cooktop. This has a little bit of counter space. And I don't think they thought about it. It's not a small house, but they made a big living room and then they made a family room. The living room is dark. It's non-usable. The people that lived here before me couldn't use it either. So they used it as an office. So their, the living room never got used. Let me make sure everything's off. Uh, the family room gets used and then the bedrooms are big. It's very strange, this house. But the bathrooms are tiny. The master bathroom It's about that big behind me. It's really, really small. So it's kind of a really odd house. And there were times I thought about, well, let's break this wall down or change it. And we never did. We never changed it. I didn't buy the house for the house. When I moved out here in 1988, I, I'll be honest, I bought it for the land. The land to me was what I wanted. The house what at the time was a decent price compared to what they were going for. And I looked at it this way. If I ever had the money to change something, you can change the house, any house pretty much, but you can't change the land. So I bought it because of that. So a lot of the land out here when I was looking, because we're right in the city, they, let me see something. I thought I left it on too long. I didn't. A lot of them that were this big were hillsides. And I wanted something that had usable land. And so that's why I bought it for the land. I figured it, it could be, it could bust this out or change this, but a lot of times you don't do what you think you're gonna do. It took us 15 years to get that back room done. 15 years we looked at it and we kept thinking we're gonna do it. And then all of a sudden, bam, we're just gonna do it and get it all done. She, there's, she's, Zoe, leave. Jack alone. You're not getting any more cookies. So we're done. I'm going to finish washing. I'll have a tray of cookies for Gary in the morning when he gets up. They're so good. And will he be surprised? Probably not. He gets up in the morning. He had a cake the other day. I baked a cake. So he knows I'm going to bake. So tell me if this really bored you to death. Some of you are going to lie. I know that. And you're going to lie and say, oh no, we want to see more as you're going. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'll see if I can get my kitchen cleaned. I'm working on it. <laughs> they use that for movie props. My brother got me, he got me a kind of a copy and then I redid it. And they were using it in Los Angeles where he used to work in a movie company. And I laminated it and redid it. And I keep certain instructions and certain recipes that I make. I keep it on the fridge. I've got one for a no-bake potato casserole. No bake? No bake potato casserole. Haven't made that for a while. I've got my pizza recipe. So certain things, I've got a cranberry crunch or a cranberry cake I make. I haven't made that. That's what I should have made for him. He loves that. That's oatmeal and cranberries. Maybe I'll make that in the next few days. I ordered a bunch of cranberries because of Thanksgiving and I froze them because I like fresh cranberries over canned. Maybe I'll make that. But now he's got cookies in the morning. So I hope you enjoyed this. 
I'm going to walk over there and shut it off. Have a wonderful day if I post this. And if I post it, I'm crazy. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And if you want, like and subscribe. Now you're probably going to unsubscribe. What is she doing? Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you all.